Hey everyone, part four today. We're gonna lay down our brick oven floor. To build your oven floor, you have to use fire brick. And the reason you can't use standard bricks is because they are not able to withstand the extreme temperatures of this type of oven. And they will break down over time from the constant heating and cooling over and over again. Fire bricks are meant for extreme heat conditions. They will last forever. For my oven floor, I'm using bricks that are sized four inches by eight inches. Now, if you can find the bricks that are square, uh, I believe they're nine inches square or something like that, those are better. They're easier to lay down, um, but I can't find them by me, so I'm using these, and a lot of people have used these, and the bottom line is they will both work just fine. It's just a little more labor intensive with these. Now, you wanna choose bricks that are in the best shape possible. Uh, you're gonna be getting a lot of these, so try to pick out the ones that you think are best. Avoid bricks that have things like this, chips in them in the corner especially. Uh, you, can't, you want your oven floor to be, be as, uh, in the best shape possible. When you lay these bricks down on your oven floor, you want to set them up in a pattern like this. This is a herringbone pattern. And the reason that it's done like this is because when you're using your pizza paddle, some of these bricks may be slightly higher than others. And when you have it set like this, it is less likely to catch an edge. If you set the brick straight like this, your pizza paddle might hit one of the bricks that's slightly higher, and that's a problem. So you want it to, to, to glide on your pizza floor when you're turning your pizzas and you're taking them out. If you remember that I had this stencil in my previous video, um, this thing comes in really handy because right now I'm just gonna trace it so that way I create uh, the same shape on the ground here. And that way I know how many bricks I gotta lay down uh, before I start cutting them down and making the same exact shape with the bricks. In part three, I poured an insulative barrier that's gonna be sitting underneath our oven floor. Right now that is still curing. If you haven't seen that video, you don't wanna miss that step. So if you wanna check it out, just click in the top right hand corner. Now, since that's still curing, I can't really do anything on top of it yet, but I do wanna cut out the brick for the oven floor. That way, when it is time and ready, I can just lay it right on top and we'll be ready to build our dome. You saw me draw this line earlier. And the reason why I drew this line is because it's going to allow me to maintain the proper orientation of my herringbone pattern. What I mean is that right now, this is the line here. And I have the center of my pattern lined up so that all of these little corners meet along this line here. And that's just going to look nicer when the entrance of the oven is all set in place. Everything will be centered. The vermiculite is cured enough so that we can install our floor. But before we install our floor, we want to put something underneath that floor to allow us to level it. Now you're going to see in these, these bricks, they're not completely 100% identical to each other. Some are a little bit thicker, some are a little bit thinner. And so to allow us to make adjustments so that we can level them off more easily and better, um, we're going to put a thin coat of a fire clay and sand mixture. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean off this whole top area here uh, as best I can because these, these pebbles kind of do break off pretty easily. And I'm just going to skim coat some of that material, some of that clay material right on here. I'm going to let it dry for a little bit. Then we're going to use a notch trowel like this and we're going to create um, some notches in here, kind of like when you set tile uh, for a uh, bathroom floor, for example. What it's going to do is it's going to allow us to press down on the bricks 
uh, if we need to, to get them level with the others. The mixture is a one-to-one -one ratio of fire clay and masonry sand. You're gonna add just enough water so that you get a paste-like consistency. The idea is that you wanna be able to use your tr notched trowel and you want those edges to stay firm. You should really think about getting one of these mixing paddles. This one is actually for joint compound, but I find that it works a lot better on materials like this and thin set and things like that. If you want to see further progress on this project, please check me out on Instagram. The link is in the description below. Um, and as always, thank you for watching. If you are not subscribed, check out my channel. And if you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. Um, a new video will be coming shortly. We'll be building the dome next. Um, and as always, everybody be healthy and safe, and I will see you in the next one.